Hi, my name is Tinus Boysen. I am an associate professor at the Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering at Stellenbosch University uh, in the Faculty of Engineering. So welcome to this presentation uh, for the open day, which is supposed to inform you and help you make a decision on what the right uh, career path for you would be. So the content that I want to talk to you about today uh, spans a few questions that you are likely to have. And these questions include things like, why on earth would I study electronical engineering? What or electrical engineering? What does it give me? And um, what will I benefit from doing so? The next thing that you should be asking is, why this department? There are other universities, there are other departments. What does this department give me? And then I'll be talking to you about the five research areas that falls into this wide spectrum of electro electrical and electronic engineering. Um, that includes uh, energy, telecommunication and electromagnetics, uh, robotics and informatics and data science or data engineering. Um, I'll also be talking to you about job opportunities. So when you start to study engineering, that's one of the things that you should be asking yourself as well. How likely am I to get a job, uh, specifically in South Africa, but obviously as well, um, how likely am I to get a job outside? And then I'll um, just cover some more information, contact information, and if we do have time, I will also look at some of the uh, interesting projects that we're working on. So the first question that you should be asking yourself is, what does this career give me? What are the, what are the main things that I'm going to get out of this? I always tell my students, you need to choose a career uh, that you're really happy with and that you're really going to enjoy. Um, you don't want to be stuck with something for 40 uh, plus years in an industry that you don't really enjoy. And engineering is something that you really need to have a passion for. Um, I know that I do, and I know that most of my students do. And if you do, uh, your work really doesn't feel like work. But the things that we present or that, we, that uh, this, this industry gives you is a feeling of um, being challenged, uh, something that, that constantly keeps you on your toes, something in which you constantly learn new aspects, as you know, engineering and specifically electrical and electronic engineering and uh, the data uh, engineering that goes with it are fields that constantly evolve. And so you will never be bored. Uh, you will always be challenged and it'll be interesting. The, the next thing that you, you will find is the, the fields within electrical and electronic engineering are so broad that you can move about within these fields. Um, I know from personal experience, because I've been moving around from communications to energy, to uh, renewable sources, to informatics, everything, and it keeps it alive and it keeps it interesting. And the, the next thing that I think is important to note as well is the job opportunities. There are excellent job opportunities if you study electrical and electronic engineering. In fact, many of our students don't even end up in engineering but the skills that they acquire as they study engineering, um, they can use in other fields as well. So many of our students end up in FinTech, they end up in informatics as a specialization, software development. So the way that we, um, we really mold you to think for yourself and to learn for yourself and the, the job opportunities are legion, both inside South Africa and outside. So why our department? What does it, what does it give you? Um, our department, has uh, obviously international accreditation through the Washington Accord, but then also just considering the whole of Africa, we have the second best uh, engineering, uh, we are the second best engineering university uh, in, in Africa, which really says a lot. Um, we have about 70 personnel, 70 staff, um, that takes care or take care of 600 odd students. So we have a pretty high uh, lecturer to student ratio and we can take care of you while you are here. We also have many support functionalities or support structures, uh, which the Dean will talk to you about. Then we also have uh, something that's pretty unique to Stanbosch University is we have strong industry ties. That really implies a few things. Firstly, we get good funding from industry because funding, um, funding is dependent on us doing relevant work and industry realizes, our industry partners realize that we, prove, we do work that is valuable to them. So we have very close ties to industry. The second thing that it implies is also that you should be able to walk out of here into a job 
with one of our partners. And if, you, if you're familiar with the engineering industry, you will know that someone with a degree from Stellenbosch uh, is highly sought after. So we have this very close tie. And I think that's a, it's a strange thing about engineering, um, which is different to other academic faculties. We have a very strong industry relationship and many of the stuff that we do at the university is very much applied and tries to address regional problems um, without losing the international context and without losing the cutting edge uh, of our work. The, the other thing that makes us special is that we also have excellent, uh, post, an excellent postgraduate program. So many of our students uh, go on to do postgraduate research um, and that will include master's degrees and PhD degrees, which just hones that field of specialization slightly more and allows you to focus on an area that really excites you. And then it allows you to go out into industry and do something that really changes the world and makes the life better uh, for those around you, which is what engineering is about. Then um, when you study electronic and electrical and electronic engineering, you have to make a choice. You have to choose which area you want to go into. So um, it's, it's slightly complicated by this fifth area of specialization, but I'll try to keep it simple. And um, we have four uh, historical core avenues that you can choose. The first one is in energy, the second one electromagnetics and telecommunication, and then informatics and robotics. So those are the historical four channels. Um, and you, when you choose those, uh, you don't have to choose in the first year or the second or the third year, you only have to choose in your final year, which means you get expertise from all four of those individual areas and you only have to specialize in the final year. And um, then we also have something that was introduced a little bit more recently, and I'll say more about it in a second. We also have data engineering. And data engineering is something that really excites me, something that we, uh, that we realized is a big need from industry. It's something that industry came to us and said, we need this thing. So um, all the students that study in that discipline have to choose in their first year uh, whether they want to do this. And then the, the, the modules that you take in the four years of study, or five, it doesn't go that well, six, um, they look a bit different. Um, and you will then focus a bit more on statistics, uh, probability theory, um, maybe a bit of data science as well. And uh, you will have many of the modules will overlap with the other four but you will typically choose in the first year already, you will choose, choose to take this data engineering discipline. Uh, the, let, let's go into a bit more detail. So the first area is the area of energy. And energy is a very hot topic, um, if you don't mind the pun. And in this topic, we look at various aspects. So obviously generating energy is a big issue, especially in South Africa, where you have load shedding, um, just generating electrical energy um, is a very important thing. And this obviously covers uh, renewable energy or the, the typical um, norm, which is coal burning, uh, combustion energy. Also, it looks at things like uh, vehicular energy. So what energy do you use to propel vehicles? It's not limited to just the electricity energy that you typically think of uh, in terms of ESCOM, but it's a bit more broad than that. Then um, we also have in this discipline, the distribution of energy. So when this energy is generated, um, how do you distribute it between towns, between power stations and the substations, and also between households on a municipal level? So that's some of the things that we cover, transmission lines and energy transfer and transformers. So Stellenbosch is very strong in this field, in fact. Um, then also the control of energy. So how do you, what do you do with this energy to direct it and to turn it on, to turn it off, to control it properly? We also look at energy transformation or conversion. And in this case, it could be uh, converting from one voltage to another, converting from one type of energy to another, and then, for example, going from AC to DC, DC to AC, and then also looking at things like taking it from electrical energy to thermal energy and back, taking it from electrical energy to kinetic energy, and possibly in reverse as well. So it, it looks very much to the whole spectrum of energy. And some examples are renewable energy. Um, we have a very nice chair in uh, solar, uh, solar generation. And we also have um, smart grids. We also have this postgraduate degree in smart grids, which is a very useful thing and very popular at the moment. And that looks at 
how the grid can be evolved to become smart to allow remote and decentralized control and metering so that we have a more clever or a smarter way of managing our grid and managing smart devices, um, for example, visa controllers. Um, it also includes electrical motors and generators and also high voltage DC uh, lines, which is something that is gaining traction internationally. We also have a field, the second one of telecommunication and electromagnetics. Um, again, Stellenbosch is very strong in this field. And in this case, we're looking at things like broadcasting and communication, radar, radio astronomy, superconductors, in which we have a highly rated researcher in our department. And some of the examples include uh, mobile phones, television, which is kind of dated at the moment, but the Wi-Fi inside your, um, your tablet is an example of this, antennas, radar, as I said, and then also satellite communication. So we'll talk a bit about that later if we have time, but satellites um, is something that's also uh, very specialized in Stellenbosch. We, we sent up the first satellite, a remote sensing satellite of, uh, made in Africa in our department. And um, then the third one is Informatica, or Informatics rather. So Informatics is something that uh, is gaining a lot of traction, and this covers also a broad spectrum of disciplines and inside here falls things like uh, computer hardware and software looking at how the hardware is made how the inside of a, a chip uh, operates how it works how to make one of these and then also how to write the software all the way from assembly code which is the lower level code all the way up to the high level languages like java and python and javascript for example it also looks at digital communication so on the previous slide in um, telecommunication and electromagnetics we looked at analog communication. Uh, we also do digital communication, which is something that's uh, to a large extent uh, growing faster than analog communication, but also relies on the analog communication. Also includes computer science and um, machine learning. Machine learning is also a, a very hot topic. So artificial intelligence will fit in here. Things like speech recognition, um, writing recognition, uh, pattern recognition, Autonomous driving, there would be very, very many fields that fall into this category. And it also includes things like Internet of Things and um, a lot of data science uh, also falls into this area. Then the fourth area is robotics. So again, uh, something that Stonewash University is very strong at. Um, and this includes uh, computer controlled autonomous systems and robotic modeling and simulation and route planning and collision avoidance. So you can hear from those topics, it's broadly speaking um, about UAVs and uh, autonomous vehicles, uh, things like self-driving cars, for example, will fall into this category, um, automatic uh, navigation of aircraft, um, or automatic landing systems will fall into this. And then also there will be many industrial robots uh, or robotics, which will obviously become increasingly important as we move into the fourth industrial revolution, uh, where a lot of the jobs or a lot of the work, uh, the tedious work, um, will move to robotics. Um, a lot of these robots will have to have the intelligence and the control, uh, which we know how to implement. And then the fifth one um, is the data engineering. So for data engineering, um, it's important to maybe note at this point it's something that we only started in 2020, so we only allow 50 students per year into this degree. Um, and for this one, it's very much focused on data, which is the gold of the century. It is the thing that makes the world go around at the moment. And what we, um, what we want to introduce you to, or what we want to prepare these students for, is the time of big data and the fourth industrial revolution. So many of these things, um, are, have been neglected in other engineering disciplines, uh, which is why we're introducing it here. And as I said, it's something that industry asked for. Um, and it includes things like uh, finding patterns in data sets, uh, developing algorithms to, to convert raw data, which might be messy or lossy, or uh, might even contain errors, um, to, to clean data sets and then convert it to something that's useful. Uh, there are many examples of this, of new telemetry systems and all the data that it generates needs to be converted and made useful to be practical and come to full fruition of its potential. 
Um, it also uh, hinges quite heavily on development of software and uh, databases is obviously also a big part of this because it has to capture those telemetry measurements and then also uh, give it back when requested from the developer. Um, so that's data engineering. So just something more on data engineering because it tends to be this obscure, strange thing at the moment. Um, those are the skills that you would require. Well, those are the, the basic uh, fundamental skills that you will acquire in this, in this degree. You'll see engineering makes up a third and statistics 18%. It's a lot on maths, computer science, artificial intelligence, and then basic science. And um, if I haven't mentioned it, this degree is also approved by the Engineering Council of South Africa. It was recently, um, so it's also covered in the Washington Accord. Then um, in terms of job opportunities, this is, this is really important for somebody studying engineering. You want to know that you're going to have a salary, that you'll be able to support yourself and probably your family as well. So the job opportunities in South Africa are really legion. Our students walk out of university and they typically end up with a job. It may take a month, it may take two months, um, especially given the, the, the current climate, but they get jobs. And the interesting thing is they get well-paid jobs as well. And these jobs are not limited to South Africa. Um, for example, I've worked in the UK, I've done work in Germany, um, even worked with companies in America uh, and in the end decided to come back, but your skills are relevant here and useful here and important here, but they're just as useful and relevant and important abroad. And many of our students end up in other countries as well. So the, uh, some examples include the telecommunication industry, which would include Telcom, um, Vodacom, MTN, Cobham, EMSS and Vastec. Um, and then the defense industry could include companies like the NEL Dynamics, Roitech Radar Systems, VAE Land Systems, and Saab Aviatronics, et cetera. So it's maybe important to also mention that many of these companies are based in Stellenbosch, and some of them actually started in Stellenbosch. Um, we're right next to Technopark, which is the technology hub, it's like the Silicon Valley of South Africa, um, which is very convenient. It's less than five kilometers, maybe 10 kilometers from campus. And so we have a very close relationship with these companies in Technopark, and many of our students directly move into these companies when they graduate. And in fact, many of their projects, especially the postgraduate projects, are based on stuff from these companies. Um, processing uh, the motor industry also includes Sassel, Iscor, AECI, Rhyme Metal, Denel Munitions, um, Volkswagen, Ford, Toyota, Mello Cabs, which is another company that started in South Africa, electric vehicle company and started in Stellenbosch, in fact, and then uh, we also have electrical uh, industry companies like Eskom, ABB, renewable energy companies, which are also uh, manifold right now, and then obviously municipalities, which need, which need the, the skills of engineers uh, quite desperately. Um, other job opportunities are in the high-tech and space industry, so the CSIR and the SKA, um, we are a big partner in the SKA, SKA partnership, and then high-tech startups, and for example, CubeSpace, which manufactures microsatellites and nanosatellites. They're based in Stellenbosch, and they spun out of Stellenbosch. Um, computer industry, uh, all companies doing hardware and software development, but also this includes Amazon, and many of my old um, student uh, people who studied with me, um, student peers, are now working at Amazon here in Cape Town, uh, IBM, HP, Microsoft, Siemens, etc. And then in terms of electronic product industry, there are many companies making electronic products in South Africa, also in Stellenbosch, and um, there are actually too many to mention. Uh, it's something that we excel at. And then machine learning, um, there are many companies also sat in Stellenbosch, Prolexus, Capitec, Stone3, and then also companies like Media24 and Google, who are heavily dependent, increasingly so, on machine learning activities. And to be honest, this is one of the requests that I find most from industry at the moment, is where can we get students with data science, uh, data engineering, machine learning experience, because they're realizing the full potential of this, especially in the context of the fourth industrial revolution. Um, in terms of uh, commercialization of our research, we also have a very strong tie with INRIFIS. INRIFIS is the tech transfer office uh, of the university. Um, I, I advise you to go and look at their website. 
And some of the examples of companies that have spun out of our department include Inductex, which, Inductex, which looks at superconductors and nanoelectronics, Christos Tech, um, which is a novel anti-privacy approach using cryptocurrency. So they um, notify, or they, they, they basically allow the, the, the capture of people who steal videos online. Uh, S-Plane Automation, who focus on aerospace and defense. Uh, Bridget, which is a company that I founded. Uh, an Internet of Things company, that does visa, water, and energy asset monitoring. Uh, CubeSpace, as I said, they do components for microsatellites. All of those companies in Stellenbosch or started from Stellenbosch, and um, those are companies that you could also choose to work for. So there is much more that I can say, and there's much more in information. Uh, we will gladly talk to you. Uh, we are really here to help you. Um, all the lecturers at Electrical and Electronic Engineering are passionate about what they do. Um, we want to help you to become an engineer so that you can go out into the world and change the world. That's what we're about. So we would gladly like to talk to you, um, find out what, you're, what, you, what you plan to do, help you with any questions that you may have. And the contact information is shown on the screen there. Um, we will uh, we'll be looking after it. So yes, thank you for the opportunity and good luck with this very important life choice that you have to make.